So we're going to look at um, Unit 2 now. Now, Unit 2 is similar to Unit 1 in terms of what it says. It's teaching and learning and assessment and education and training, but this is developing it. So it's sort of moving on from Unit 1. Uh, but a lot of the work that you actually produced for Leap Unit 1 will more or less, I'm, I'm saying more or less, it depends on what you've written. Uh, I need to emphasize that all the time because I've put the cross references in for you to check. And where you can use that same evidence, it's then fine. You can use that evidence and just discuss it in terms of what the um, 2.1 is actually saying. So as we move oh. on. Do you yeah. know what? I don't have this. You didn't have what? This? This, this um, assignment sheet that you have. I don't one. have. I don't have one, the front sheet. I don't have it with the evidence to ah. show achievement. Right, well, uh, what My I've got, it's, it's on the VLE. It's on Moodle. No, because I downloaded it yesterday and it's blank. Blank? Oh, blank I, on that side. I've, I've so just, I've just got off, off, the, off the VLE now. If I actually close that. That's funny. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll close this one. I'll put it down. Yeah. Oops, hang on. I'm back again. No, I will close it. Close that one. Yeah. Now, on this is Unit 2, yeah? Yeah. And we go down to all the bits and pieces that are on. Unit 2, Developing Teaching and Learning Suggested Evidence, yeah? Oh, is that what it's called? That's the one, yeah. So... Oh, and here we come. I will do eventually. What's wrong with it? Ah, there we are. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I put in. It's the same as the one I did for Unit One, and I've I've done one of these sheets with each of the units that you want to do. Uh, and what what I've written in the side. This is this is where. Uh, what the evidence will be that you do when you actually put it in. But I've actually wrote, wrote in roughly what you should be putting in there. So mm -hmm. analyze the application of pedagogical and principles in your own area of specialism. Now, analyze the teaching principles you use in your teaching day-to-day -day situation, right? So what are the main principles of the school in which you operate? Mm -hmm. Number two is evaluate the effectiveness of the use of creative and innovative approaches in your own area of specialism. Evaluate using detail from your lesson planning and schemes of work, right? How effective it is. So it'll be a summary of, or your evaluation will contain a summary of how you actually go about your day-to-day -day teaching. Mm. Again, use initial and diagnostic assessments to agree learners' individual goals and learning preferences. Now, you've done all that in Learning Objectives 2.3 and 2.4, yeah? But it makes sure you included, uh, on Unit 1, it mentions um, learning styles, but it doesn't go into detail on it. But just check what you've written. You may have covered learning styles completely, in which case it'll, it can cross-reference directly, yeah? And you can actually write that in your script um, 2.1, uh, using this, you can write on, uh, this, this is covered in Unit 1, Learning Objectives 2.3 and 2.4. But again, all I ask is that you check what you've actually written in Unit 1 to make sure it covers. If we go nip down to the bottom of the sheet, I've actually done a reminder at the bottom. <laughs> again, the above is a pointer to, uh, to where evidence lies, but it will be slightly different for all of you depending on your situation. It's not exhaustive and it's purely advisory. Feel free to extemporize, personalize your script as you see fit, but make sure just as you start a new page in your portfolio, you keep the learning objectives headed and then 1.1, etc. at the start of each response so that I know it's there. But on these, wherever there's a cross-referencing um, and there's quite a few in here. Wherever there's a cross-referencing notice, all you need to do is read what you've written in that area and see that it does it cover what this says here. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So initially, you, you, you've produced initial and di- or diagnostic assessments, not necessarily both, but you, you've an initial assessment of at least two learners' work that you did in, in Unit 1, and you agreed um, the learning plan was agreed from the initial assessment, yeah? So this is cross-referencing directly, yeah, from that one. Again, devise a scheme of work taking account of the needs of learners, delivery model, and the internal and external requirements. So again, refer to copies of scheme of work at Unit 1, LO 3.1. Again, as always, when you cross-reference, check what you said meets those three points, yeah? Mm -hmm. So we go to 2.3. Design teaching and learning plans, which take account of that. So again, refer to copies of your ILPs at Unit 1, 3.2. Checking your text there again. You know, they they, they sometimes will add on, like it it might not say curriculum requirements on Unit 1. So you may have mentioned it in in the script that you've written because it is part of it, or you may not have. In which case, um, you can check. You can all you need to do is extemporise on that and say to you, these are the plans that were developed from the uh, initial assessments on there, and they meet curriculum requirements because, and then just say how it meets those requirements. Yeah, but it, it means adding probably a, a paragraph instead of writing a ream of paper about it. Hmm. 2.4 is identify opportunities for learners and others to provide feedback. So again, cross-reference Unit 1, LO 3.5, noting the and others. Yeah, This is, um, I thought I'd put something on there, I've not missed it off. I've I've, I've cut it's changed boxes, I've not done it. But what I was going to write in there, in fact I will do now, this can be the well, uh, back from uh, at the others. So this is this is your feedback. Uh, a, a number of um, learners find that they, well, I, we we don't get feedback much from the, the kids because they're too small. But as you said, Deepa, you actually talk to them and get verbal feedback from them in the way yeah. you actually interact with them. So you get feedback that way. But you also get feedback on what you're doing from other people. And where it says others, what it's actually meaning is, I put B. I'm not sure. Uh, this can be feedback from colleagues and line managers, people you are involved with the process with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 2.5, explain how your own practice in planning, inclusive teaching and learning has taken into account theories, principles and models of learning, communication and assessment. Now, again, this will definitely on this one depend on what you've written. Uh, You'll be able to look at the reflective practice you've done in Unit 1, LOs 8.1 and 8.2, and make sure you've added taking into account the theories, models, and principles are added here. If if you've you know if you want to if you've not talked anything about the uh, theories, principles, and models of learning uh, and communication. If you've not done that in Unit 1, when you read back what you've said, then you can do there's some work, some stuff on the VLE that you can actually have a read through and then add that bit on, and say where it matches up with these theories and models of, of, of um, learning and communication. Again, analyse uh, theories of behaviour management on 3.1. I'm moving on a little bit. I'm going to come back to the other one in a minute. Um, and again, read and respond the reading resource on behaviour management on the that will give you some pointers to what's you know put a short analysis in as to uh, what the theories of that are. There are many theories on behaviour management in practice. <laughs> 
few of them work. It depends on which group you're actually dealing with. Um, theorists tend to be a sort of a panacea um, for a particular subject, but that particular subject doesn't have a panacea. It has many different facets. Um, the behaviour of, of, of children in the four to eight group will be different from the ones eight to 12, and the ones from 12 to 15 will be different from the ones 15 to 19. There's a, there's a whole host of things in there that will be different. So it looks at those theories and sort of read and respond to that. Establish and sustain a safe, inclusive learning environment. That is almost a direct cross-reference to 4.3, LO, LO uh, 4.3 on unit one. Mm -hmm. Again, explain how your own practice in creating and maintaining a safe, inclusive teaching and learning environment has taken into account the theories of behaviour management. So it steps back to that one there, and then it responds or adds to your response at 3.1 that there is also further reading on safe and inclusive in Unit 1 resources as well as Unit 2. Uh, that You may find some of the resources are actually still in Unit 1 because they cover both. Okay, so I'm going to nip back to, um, we've, we've quickly rushed across 1.1, 1 1.2. 1 uh, now, you said deeper there that uh, you hadn't had a chance to have a look at this before you put your stuff in for 1.1 uh, 1 and 1.2. Mm. Don't worry yeah. about it. Are there any differences in what it says on here and to where you looked at it? Um, I'm not sure. I I think I um, haven't analysed enough of it, to be honest. Well, basically what you've got to do is look at um, the principles of teaching that you use within the, the school that you're in on a day-to-day -day practice, what you do. Uh, there's a, um, a piece on the VLE on pedagogical principles, right? Yeah. Have a read at that. Have a read through there and see if it gives you any any um, ideas as to you know the sort of thing that you need to add or if it's okay. And, and then again, what I do, do I I um what's it called? I I used it according to like my job as a senko and what it is we look for to identify a child's needs and then the strategies that we may use to put in place to aid the child. Yeah. Well, basically, pedagogical principles are principles of teaching children, right? Yeah. So I explained that as well. Yeah. So that basically, that's all it means. That it's a, it's a word that you can hardly pronounce, but it means teaching children. Yeah. yeah. The principles of teaching children. So uh, yeah, that, I'll, I'll just wanted to have a look see if I have retained something on the. Let's pull that down a minute. The. I put another piece on here, and I think I, I'm not sure whether I took it off again. Um, that's your suggested evidence. Was that the teaching content ideas? Yeah, that's oh, unit one. Uh -huh. No, it's not. It's developing and teaching, it's unit two, that one. Developing, teaching, learning, yeah. There you are. How's that unit amplification? Does that give you any better look at that? What do you think, yeah. Adele? Yeah. This actually has got E.g. Con concepts and specialist knowledge, experiential learning, kinesthetic principles, multicentric taxonomy of learning, mastery of learning, supported learning, actively engaging in learning processes and shared outcomes. Right. So again, tutor presentation for individual research and some mind mapping. So it's a short analysis on what the principles are about and what we're trying to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. 
1.2, evaluate the effectiveness and use of creative and innovative approaches to in your own area of specialism. Where, wherever it says this, uh, your own area of specialism, now I went back to, to speak to um, somebody at the awarding body on this, in fact, the EV when, when uh, he came in, and he said, the same way I took it, actually, uh, is that everybody in teaching, doesn't matter what section they're in, is in a specialist area. Because everybody who's teaching groups of people in totally different um, circumstances, yeah, in totally different ways, to produce the same result. So that the, 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 the importance of 1.2, evaluating the effectiveness of how you actually operate, is really important. So again, this is creative and learner-centered, uh, extension activities, project-based. Some of the things that you do for your uh, learners or students that you do because it's that particular group. Yeah? So it's anything in that term um, can be used. So you'll have, um, if you've got groups, or even if you've got one in one-to-one -one situations, you will have different approaches with different learners in that one-to-one -one situation because of their circumstance, yeah? Mm. So it's looking at um, supported independent study, promoting collaborative working, uh, peer teaching, activity-based learning. These are little mind maps, yeah? Just to give you some idea, I'm not asking you, it's not asking you to put all of that in. It's just to give you some ideas of what the um, learning objective and the uh, assessment criteria are actually asking you to do. Because uh, a lot of these qualifications, and I certainly find them as you get up to levels five, six, seven, the the way the assessment criteria are posed. They're very, sub uh, very subjective, uh, and you can actually interpret them in different ways. Uh, and the difficulty is, have you interpreted it the right way so that you're going to achieve what you're trying to achieve? And these, this is just sort of a guideline. Yeah, The suggested evidence that I've put down, c c combined with this um, unit amplification, um, is just a guideline for you. So your learning outcomes there, be able to investigate practice in all areas of specialism. So what you're actually doing is, as we said in, in Unit 1, L08, I think it is, yeah, your reflective, your reflective practice, it's, it's looking at that, making doing a reflection and analyse what you're doing. Yeah. You okay with that, Adele? You've gone quiet. I can't hear you. <laughs> You've got your sound off. I think she's got her sound off. Yeah, you've got you, you've turned your sound off. <laughs> can you hear me? You can hear me. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Ah, so <laughs> right. So that that's basically. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. That's oh, fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oops, big space on this one. So learning objective one is just two uh, assessment criteria, that's all. Um, and it's basically looking back at the end of unit one, uh, the, the reflective part and how you apply that effect, that, the, the, the reflection that, you, that you've done. So LO2 will have uh, Use of initial and diagnostic assessments to agree learner goals. So you've got individual goals, uh, SWOT analysis, um, RPL or APL, um, skills shortfall, addressing basic skills needs. It all depends, again, on the circumstance that you've got. And uh, this is why uh, I always put on there, use the initial assessments that you use within your organisation for, uh, you'll have done that for at least two learners on unit one, and that evidence is then completely transferable onto, into this section. Um, it's only when you get into teaching at possibly, 
higher youth or adult levels that you'd be able to look at um, RPL and APL um, if those are actually I've got a group um, they've been doing this qualification with a, another organization which is either closed uh, and I picked them up to to complete their studies and they brought some stuff in for um, APL or RPL um, and some of it's relevant and some of it's not but we're gonna we're gonna work through it to find out what is um, because the easiest way will be to, to go with them and say, right, have we got any evidence for this? And they'll be able to say, oh, yes, I've, I've covered that. I've done that in this piece of work here. So that way we'll be able to identify where they're up to and where they need to get to from there. So, again, that's, that's one uh, section that not everybody will use who works in junior and infants. But anybody above that level, um, well, a bit beyond that level, will we'll find that that comes in uh, quite a bit. Skills shortfalls or basic skills needs. Um, we have a group of uh, adult learners who are a mixture of um, Eastern European and Arabic. They, their level of English is, most of them is okay, but there's about nine or ten of them that will need that uh, extra English. So we've then got to look at the course they're on. It, whether they continue immediately with that course or, or for the first few months we put them through an English writing course so that they'll be able to um, write to the level they need to be able to do to complete the other course which is a level three. So all those things that we, we use in different ways to actually achieve pretty much the same result yeah, to meet, meet, meet the needs of your learners. And again, this is learner needs, inclusive and diversity, range of styles, approaches, defined goals, building, understanding, developing skills, sequence linked to assessment, skills development, integrated approach to e-learning. All these things will uh, are looking at schemes of work, are ways of actually delivering um, education and training. But again, they won't apply to everybody because everybody won't be in that situation. Um, you, you, you will be not, not be using e-distance learning or uh, blended learning um, in your day-to-day -day job. I do it all the time. This is what we're doing now. Um, the, the, um, do you know the difference, for, for instance, between um, distance learning and blended learning? This blended is this using this media as well. All the stuff just online in terms of type. Yeah, and the other one, the blended one, is where you've got a tutor that you can, you know, come back to and say, uh, I've got a problem with this. What do we do next, or whatever? Uh, yeah. And that's what we use because we find it more successful. So, it, <laughs> teaching practice portfolio, including awarding organisation specifications vocational standards, initial assessment information, all of those things, examples from practical teaching experience. So that is what we've used in Unit 1, examples from practical teaching experience where you've actually got a scheme of work that you've put together for a particular group and um, lesson planned it to uh, completion. So on those, um, I'm not going to go beyond that, because there's quite a bit of stuff to do on there. Um, so what I would suggest is, um, do you have a look at those, th this paper as well, uh, with what you've written. I'll have a look at, at what you've sent to me, and I'll give you some feedback fairly quickly on that, yeah. Um, yeah. And then I'm, I'll either say, yeah, that's fine, or you need to add such and such a thing. So are you okay, Adele, to start? Hello, one with that. Yes. Yeah, fine. Okay. You know where I am. If you need me, <laughs> just just uh, send me a. If, what what I would normally do, if if you are happy with what you you know what you need to do now, what complete hello one and send it me in and let me have a look. Yeah, and then I, we can any anything that that needs to be uh, addressed. We can do it at that point, and then with the rest of the unit, we'll be able to work through it fairly quickly. 
it'll be it'll be quicker than Unit One because as a, as I've shown you on there, there are quite a lot of areas where cross referencing can occur, and it may need a little bit of variety from you just to actually tie it in. Yeah. So it's not mm -hmm. as arduous, if you like, as uh, Unit One. So I'll dump that back down again now. Oops. Yeah, go back to that. So these two papers are, you'll find most useful on the VLE. Uh, yes, I did make some changes, didn't I? <laughs> so it's teaching content ideas, yeah, and um, suggested evidence. Those two documents you'll find quite useful. Uh, there are, um, whoops, a couple of these on here. Uh, Theories, principles, and models. Yeah, little video. You can have a look at that. Yeah, uh, I put on. Oops, close that back down. Oh no! Close the wrong one. Oh no! That was quick. <laughs> What's it asking me to log in for? I've already logged in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On Unit 1, there'll be a load of stuff on there that you can look at that will refer to actually Unit 2 as well. But unit two, as I say, I've added a few bits and pieces now where there's actually um, some specific pieces. We've got to unit one, LO6 and LO7, LO2 and LO3, uh, which you can have a look at. Uh, on there. Basically, it's a short PowerPoint on developing teaching and learning assessment and education. So, again, that's another resource you can have a link through. Um, PowerPoints I don't find useful for uh, this session. I generally give the information and, and set you up on the session. Um, there's no point to me reading through that. You're perfectly capable of reading through it yourself. Um, but again, any, anything uh, you, you, you read on this, yeah. You can actually come back to me um, if you need further information. Yeah. So, what I'm doing again now? Yes, I need. Always asking me questions I don't want to answer. <laughs> so, if you are fine with LO one and two now on there, uh, I will again. I'll give you some feedback uh, deeper on what you sent me. And Antonel, as soon as you've got some stuff to send me in, send it me through, and I'll, again, get back to you as, as fast as I can. I'm going to clear the rest of these 20 files off now, <laughs> and then I've got, uh, I've got some free time, and I'll be able to come back with you, come back to you fairly quickly. All okay. right, perfect. Thank okay. you. Have you got any further questions for me before we go? Are you no. okay? Both okay? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll close the meeting now, and thank you for attending. Okay, thank, thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye now. Thank you. Bye.